Hello, we appreciate the opportunity to share our research with others. The project we are presenting today regards repellent management technologies. Hi, my name is Will, and I'm from Iowa. I'm Aria, and I'm from Basking Ridge, New Jersey. Hi, my name is Aya, and I'm from Maryland. Hi, I'm LJ, and I'm from Woodsville, New Hampshire. Hi, my name is Yul and I'm from Juncos, Puerto Rico. Hi, my name is Juan, and I'm from Vega Baja, Puerto Rico. My name is Oliver Slade, and I'm from Sydney, Montana. Hi, I'm August, and I'm from Seattle, Washington. To begin, we will introduce you to our primary objective. The goal of this experiment is to test and analyze the effectiveness of a hexagonal grid barrier propellant management device in limiting fuel slosh, separating liquid and gas phases, and minimizing the forming of ullage in the propellant tank in a microgravity environment through use of the ZQ. This objective was created with the intention to improve upon existing propellant management devices, or PMDs, in order to solve the following problems that pose threats of engine failure. One, fuel slosh poses a major threat to spacecraft's stability and navigational ability. The sheer mass of liquid fuel, combined with constant shifting of the spacecraft's center of mass due to the movement of fluid, can be detrimental to navigational systems and ideal flight paths. Two, the inability to separate liquid and gas phases within the fuel tank also poses a threat, as, as successful combustion in microgravity relies on controlling the posi positioning of ullage, or empty space within the fuel tank, to ensure liquid alone moves into the combustion chamber. And finally, in microgravity, fuel adheres to the surface of the fuel tank wall, and gas is trapped by a layer of liquid. This makes the process of venting gas without the release of valuable liquid fuel unfeasible. There are numerous existing solutions for the problems just outlined, namely PMDs. All these PMDs are flawed in some manner, whether they are heavy, inefficient, or both. They all fall short of ideal solutions. There are three main existing types of PMDs. Non-capillary PMDs, also called positive expulsion devices, partial communication PMDs, and full communication PMDs. A positive expulsion device, such as a bladder or piston, works by keeping fuel stationary within the fuel tank. As fuel depletes, the device expulses and pressure is maintained using an external gas inlet. Positive expulsion devices excel in separating liquid and gas phases and minimizing fuel slosh. However, the mass of the diaphragm enclosing the liquid can often parallel the mass of the fuel tank. This makes positive expulsion devices unviable in medium to large scale scenarios. Partial communication PMDs are typically lighter and smaller, but typically less effective at fulfilling all necessary requirements for a standalone PMD and are unable to be used in large scales because they are unable to deliver enough fuel to the engine to sustain flow. For this reason, partial communication PMDs are only able to be used in conjunction with other propellant management solutions. Full communication PMDs are typically larger and heavier than partial communication PMDs, but are better at minimizing fuel slosh and delivering phase-separated fuel to the engine. These are often viable for standalone use, but each PMD has its own drawbacks and benefits. For example, there is a full communication PMD called a vane. Vanes are linings on the internal surface of the fuel tank. They utilize the natural movement and adhesion of liquid and microgravity to guide fuel to the engine outlet. Vanes are extremely efficient in minimizing fuel slosh, and their low mass makes them a strong option. But vanes are unable to effectively separate liquid and gas when flow demand is amplified, which makes standalone vanes ineffective. Some much heavier PMDs, such as sponges, are capable of fulfilling all requirements at the cost of more mass and more volume. We are utilizing zero-G's parabolic aircraft to run the experiment in microgravity environment. This fly will allow us several periods uh, about 22 seconds of zero gravity, allowing for multiple opportunities for the liquid to settle and be observed, meaning there will be several trials of our proposed solution. To gather all of the data necessary for the experiment, we have been given a Z-Cube. The Z-Cube is a handheld laboratory fitted with Arduino sensors, a small camera, and a payload container. It is designed to run small experiments in a microgravity environment. The sensors we utilize on the Z-Cube are the accelerometer, the gyroscope, and the camera. We utilize the accelerometer to detect a microgravity environment and the camera to relate visual observations to data from the accelerometer. Using this combination, we will be able to get valuable information on the effectiveness of our proposed PMD. Our proposed PMD design will sit in an acrylic vial with the Z-Cube. The outside diameter and height of the payload capsule is 35 millimeters with an inside diameter and height of 26 millimeters. 
The contact wedding angle is a very important concept in fluid dynamics. It's defined by the angle of which liquid and solid surfaces meet. The goal of our experiment is to emphasize wettability, which is the ability of liquid to stay on a solid surface, defined by how the adhesion and cohesive forces are balanced out. Smaller, more acute angles effectively increase wettability and result in an easier transport of fluid. As you can see, a 30-degree angle results in high surface energy and contact with the surface, whereas the 75-degree angle has low surface energy. So, we are using hexagonal capillaries, which has 60-degree acute angles to maximize efficiency. The goal of our experiment is to prevent the unpredictable behavior of fluid and microgravity through the use of a pioneered PMD. There are three components to our proposed hexagonal PMD. Shown on the right is a ring scaled to one-eighth the total height of the fuel tank wall. The ring has the same diameter as the tank wall, meaning it encapsulates the entire mid-sectional area. The ring is subdivided into numerous units of hexagons, with each hexagon measuring one centimeter at its largest diameter. It's important to note that a small diameter size is necessary to minimize ullage within the hexagonal tubes. Mm -hmm. This was done in order to induce capillary flow into the hexagons, where liquid is affected much more strongly than gas. The considerations for the capillaries, especially their size and quantity, is influenced by the desire to maximize surface area and minimize volume, as a larger PMD translates to less available and usable fuel. This implies that the largest possible feasible capillary size, one centimeter, with the most hydrostatic attraction, is ideal to minimize volume and, volume and therefore mass. Additionally, the ring is gradually sloped downwards toward the center to encourage flow above the ring to flow down into the centermost capillary of the hex structure, directing into the second structure, the sump capillary. The sump capillary serves as the link between the hex structure and the sump, allowing travel from the center to the desired place, which is the bottom and the location of the sump. It relies on simple principles of adhesion and capillary action, which indicate that any fluid exiting the hex structure will travel and adhere to the capillary, directing fuel flow into the sump. The third structure present is a torus shape, placed inside the side of the hex's structure farthest from the fuel sump. This serves as a curved interrupter to flow along the sides of the fuel tank, forcing any liquid into the hex structure and repelling liquid from the then unneeded top half of the tank. This simple addition greatly improves the design. Because materials in an actual cryogenic fuel system are not readily available, we will make the following substitutions. Instead of liquid oxygen or liquid hydrogen, we will use isopropyl alcohol, or IPA, this is because the properties of cohesion and surface tension of the two are similar, as neither experience strong forces of cohesion. This becomes an important distinction to make in a microgravity environment in which the forces of adhesion and cohesion become more prominent and observable compared to gravity. Secondly, instead of the proposed insert being constructed of carbon fiber composite coated with polydopamine cupric oxide, our PMD is modeled with the easily acquired PETG 3D printed filament. We will first analyze as a control the behavior of isopropyl alcohol and microgravity with no hexagonal structure. It is expected that the IPA will move freely around a container, displaying unaffected adhesion, meaning it will climb unpredictably around the walls of the container. This extensively engineered solution should ideally greatly modify the observed fluid motion compared with the control group. A decrease in fluid movement in slosh, a decrease in adhesion to the container wall, and a visible tendency to adhere to the hexagonal structure are expected. The extent to which any of these occur is variable, but some positive results are expected. This minimum success criteria for the engineered solution is clear data supporting the occurrence of the expected results. A decrease in fluid movement and slosh, a decrease in adhesion to the container wall, and a visible tendency to adhere to the hexagonal structure are expected. Success depends on these occurrences. In a couple of preliminary tests, it became clear that addition to our PMD would greatly improve the design. In the first job test, where the hex grid was placed vertically, the IPA can be observed adhering to the capillaries nearest to the container wall. This necessitated the implementation of a torus to guide the fluid to the center capillaries. This is another demonstration of the promising potential of the efficacy of this design. This time, the hex grid is placed horizontally. This is also an earlier version of the solution which visualizes the need for the sump capillary. This is accelerometer data taken from the drop test showcase in the previous two slides. The moment in which there is a little acceleration due to gravity, therefore the four spikes in acceleration, indicate the purity of our early experimentation. It is, naturally, 
suboptimal, but the data is sufficient to draw observations from in the parabolic flight, we will have much purer data, which the onboard accelerometer will observe and validate. If successful, this proposed solution could serve as a general method for propellant management. We have chosen to use the Space Launch System, or SLS rocket fuel tank, as a model due to its pivotal role in the upcoming Artemis missions. The SLS is engineered to transport the next generation of astronauts to the Moon and Mars. Given the extended duration of these missions, efficient propellant management is crucial for mission success. The SLS fuel tank carries 537,000 gallons of chilled liquid hydrogen, a cryogenic propellant. As a super heavy lift rocket, the SLS fuel tank is over 300 feet tall. Due to its light weight and specifically engineered capacity to withstand cryogenic fuel tanks, carbon fiber composite with polydopamine cuprous oxide coating is a strong material compatible with liquid hydrogen. However, this material is still experimental and has only thus far been utilized for the purpose of research. Under the assumption that this PMD fulfills all requirements as expected, the HEX PMD should occupy the same role as a positive expulsion device. The mass of the carbon fiber PMD scaled to the size of the SLS fuel tank is 0.065 the mass of the liquid hydrogen. In comparison, the mass of a diaphragm on the SLS fuel tank is 24.5% the mass of the fuel. More specifically, the mass of the PMD is 0.26% the mass of the diaphragm. This shows that compared to traditional positive expulsion devices, the HEX PMD is significantly lighter and takes up less volume. There are possible design changes worth exploring. Ideally, in the context of capillary actions, Angle should be small so that multiple surfaces are in close proximity, and the contact wetting angle is ideal. The issue with smaller shapes and angles is the necessity for more material to fill the space, so this design comes at the cost of efficiency. However, varying the amount of material from the middle to the edge of the tank can increase efficiency. In the future design, we would implement star or triangle shapes that maximize the ability of the contact wetting angle. In addition, we would consider util utilizing aluminum or another lightweight yet strong material. Finally, this project could be expanded to be used in conjunction with other methods, such as pressurized systems. Because we do not have excellent data yet, it is impossible to pass judgment on the solution in these early stages. After the scheduled parabolic flight, we can observe the efficiency of the solution. This is our mission patch. The slosh on the bottom of the patch represents one of the primary problems that our PMD is designed to solve. The hexagons that are in the center represent the core of our PMD, the hexagonal grid. The flags on the golden stripe symbolize where we are from and the home we found in Texas with the SEAS program. And finally, the constellation of Texas in the sky represents the eight members of our group. Special thanks to all that have helped us with this project. We deeply appreciate the support of Laura Tomlin, Selena Miller, Mario Esquivel, Margaret Baggio, Zoe Sladek, Becky Frecci, Dr. Kevin Crosby, Stephanie Hanover, and the entire SEAS program and the University of Texas at Austin. NASA SEAS has helped me to meet mentors that are majorly involved in areas in STEM that I am interested in, helping me to look for scholarships and opportunities that will strengthen my future journey into STEM. NASA SEAS helped me solidify my passion for aerospace and astronomy, which is definitely something I will pursue in the future. NASA SEAS was a wonderful opportunity that has solidified my passion in aerospace engineering and space research. Talking with professionals who are working on the same issue we are is not only interesting, but also very exciting. The NASA SEAS program has solidified my readiness and confidence in my ability to work in STEM fields such as all types of physics, astronomy, astronautics, and astrobiology. NASA SEAS has given me an excellent opportunity in different fields of astronomy, physics, and engineering. It has also given me the experience of doing research in an interactive way. Now I'm one step ahead of making my dreams come through. Thank you to the people at NASA SEAS for providing me with this extraordinary experience. NASA SEAS has solidified my passion for space research and aerospace engineering. I'm glad I was able to have a great experience at NASA SEAS. I learned many things about the STEM world, including cooperation, and I thank all my mentors and all of the people that made this program possible. NASA SEAS was an amazing experience that enabled me to grow as a leader, learner, and human being. This program will jumpstart my career into a STEM field, and for that, I am forever grateful. Thank you, NASA SEAS.